Fox News did a poll on gun control. And, um, you know, when you hear the words Fox News, you probably think, well, okay, we know how this is going to go. One way or another, they probably found a way to bias it. I mean, Rasmussen is another example of a right-wing polling outlet. And every time you go through their numbers, you look at it with a little bit of a grain of salt. I mean, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think Rasmussen of the major polling organizations was the least accurate uh, going back to the 2012 election, and they gave Mitt Romney the highest chance of anybody of winning. So Fox News, you look at that and you go, mm, well, how much can we really trust the numbers from Fox News? Clearly there's going to be bias in, the favor of, uh, in favor of gun anarchy and not doing anything. Well, let's take a look. Goodness gracious. <laughs> wow. So Fox News poll, it says proposals to reduce gun violence... Uh, percent saying favor require universal background checks 91 percent in a fox news poll require mental health checks 84 percent raise legal age to buy to 21 72 uh 72 percent put armed guards in schools 69 percent and ban assault weapons 60 percent what this shows is it's overwhelming, man. Now, the only right-wing reform that's in the poll is putting armed guards in schools. And to be fair, that got very high number, 69%. That's, that's a really, really, really solid majority. But listen, that's something I've said. If, if we're going to do a package deal on gun reform, that's one area where I actually would be willing to compromise. Uh, it's not my ideal scenario, but... I don't think that's a crazy idea. Um, I mean, I think other countries might look at that as, as if it is a crazy idea. Like, that's not the answer, guys. We don't know what the fuck you're doing. Um, but I don't think it's a crazy idea, especially in the context of if it were coupled to the other reforms that we mentioned. So definitely universal background checks, require mental health checks, um, the banning assault weapons. I mean, these... I'm not even sure I agree with the one, and I've discussed this before, of raising the legal age to buy a gun to 21 years old. I, you know, you guys know my whole thing on that. I think we should draw a clean line at a certain place. And, and you can agree or disagree with where I choose to draw the line, but I think it should be one clean line. If we're going to say, hey, you could fight in the military or, you know, you could buy porn or whatever, it should be, okay, once you hit that age, you could do, any, do anything. You're an adult in the eyes of the law. Um, so I'm not even sure I agree with raising the legal age to buy a gun to 21, but... I mean, 72%. And the, I think the most important fact here is, imagine for a second we had a system where the, the voices of regular people, it, it was actually uh, accounted for. And it's used in order to create policy. Because right now, that's, we have basically the opposite of that, and that's why Congress has an approval rating that oscillates between 14% and 21%, is because they look at polling data and they go, that's cute, uh, we're going to go ahead and put that aside and call up our donors and ask them what they want us to do, because we're puppets. We're little bitch boys to the donors, and they pull our strings. So, I mean, that's, that's my takeaway from this, is when I go through polls, not just on the issue of gun reform, but on a variety of issues, I always think, imagine we had a direct democracy, a constitutional direct democracy. So in other words, yes, you do have things that are rights that you can't have the will of the mob willy-nilly take away. Like, for example, if you did a poll in 1956 on whether or not segregation should still be legal, segregation would have won in a landslide. So you could look at that and say, well, that's, you know, a giant flaw of direct democracy. What if the, you know, the majority wants to take away the rights of the minority? That shouldn't be allowed. Well, that's why you say constitutional direct democracy, because you have certain issues that you say are off the table and not open uh, to negotiation. Uh, but then outside of those issues, yes, you can decide everything democratically. And there are other downsides. So, you know, there's the downside of where you have more direct democracy. Oftentimes, people try to have their cake and eat it, too, in a way that's untenable, where, like, they'll be in favor of having really low taxes on themselves, but then also want all these social programs and social spending for healthcare and education and all that stuff, and sometimes the numbers just don't add up. So there are potential downsides of it, but stop and think for a second. Where are there more downsides? In the system we have right now, where the donors run everything and we functionally have an oligarchy, like a Princeton uh, political science study proved? 
or if we had a direct democracy. I think if we had a direct democracy, I mean, we'd have a much better system in every measurable way. Yeah, even though, admittedly, there are some flaws of having a direct democracy, but that's my takeaway. I mean, when you're doing, uh, you know, there, there's a Fox News poll, man, and again, it, it's scientific, so it, that shows it's not to be fucking tossed aside willy-nilly, but the fact that this is something that they do the poll, then they're showing it to their massively right-wing audience, and, I, you know, my guess is even the right-wing audience is like, yeah, I kind of agree with that. I kind of agree with universal background checks and uh, requiring mental health checks. I mean, we should just treat guns like cars. I don't think that's too much to ask for. I think you can have common sense regulations. And as long as everybody's willing to draw a line, but it's just a matter of where are you going to draw the line in terms of what rules are you going to have? Nobody's in favor of no rules when it comes to weapons. That's obvious. You don't want your neighbor having chemical weapons or biological weapons or or tanks or anti-tank missiles or uh, nuclear weapons. That's clear. I mean, nobody would argue in favor of that. So if you're in favor of having some rules on weaponry, well, then just keep that conversation going and, and tell me exactly what you're in favor of, exactly which gun should be exa allowed, exactly which gun shouldn't be allowed. Should we have high-capacity magazines? That's another thing that they should have put in the poll, but they didn't. Um, but that's one that I definitely favor, a ban on high-capacity magazines. So... It, it would just be amazing if we had a government that was responsive to the people, or if the people made the decisions directly, because clearly, based on all the evidence, the people strike me as significantly more rational than their, you know, our politicians who are simply bowing before their corporate overlords.